Welcome to the Nikki Rich Show. I'm your host, Miss Nikki Rich. And today, guys, we are broadcasting live out of sunny California. And I'm excited today because we got an exciting show for you. We taking it down south, y'all. We got the in-law gang in the house. But before we get to our guests, I want to tell you guys to subscribe to our YouTube, Nikki Rich, the number two. Follow us along on the Nikki Rich Show TV on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and log on to thenikkirichshow.com. Well, I don't want to keep our guests holding on any longer because I told you we got an exciting show, and our special guest is in the house. We got not only we got the director, the producer, and the cast of the in law gang. So I'm excited to welcome you guys here for the first time on the Nikki Rich Show. Welcome. How are y'all doing? Good. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. So excited to have you here. And, you know, first off, I want everybody to know who you are and everything about you, what you do, and a part of this film. So go ahead and introduce yourself. So I'll go first. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Jesse Julie. I am uh, the executive producer and also the lead Cassie on the show in Law Gang. So I'm excited to have be on the show. So thanks for having us. Hi, my name is Nashawn Kiris and I play John in the in Law Gang. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Hi, my name is Crystal T. Williams. I'm one of the producers on the in Law Gang and I play the role of Glen, uh, Brenda. And it's a pleasure to be in your show. Nikki. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Hello, good day, Nikki. My name is Alfred e. Rutherford, and I'm playing the role of Damon. Hey, Nikki, how you feeling today? I'm Jay Jesse Smith, uh, director producer. Yes, well, that's what I'm talking about. I'm so excited to have everybody here. Now, tell us how. I mean, how did this come about? In law game. So the in-law gang, um, I initially uh, met Justice a while ago through a mutual friend, and I went to him for him to write a script for my book that's selling at, at Walmart. And um, as he and I began to talk, we became closer and closer and closer. And he said, you know what? You're a writer. You don't need anybody else to write your script. Let me empower you on how to write a script. And so um, he talked to me. We talked for a long time. And then I got off the phone and I started writing the in-law gang. And then the next morning he woke up, it was in his inbox. <laughs> and, oh my goodness. He said, it's a short film. He said, now Jesse, go back and make it a feature length film. And that's what I did. And he's been guiding me along the way. So that's pretty much how it got started. And I'll let him talk and he can, he can go from there. <laughs> I mean, you could have talked. I mean, here's the thing with me. Um, out of everybody that's called me and they, Sean probably go back to furthest. Um, uh, and we got introduced by uh, Susan DePass in Miami um, a year, I think it was the year Michael Jackson passed away. Mm -hmm. Might have been, mm -hmm. or maybe before that. I, mean, I know we got, I know we got introduced down there. And um, I remember Susan always talking to me. And I remember her being this empowerful black woman and playing, you know, cards with her and just seeing how she moved and how she just took me and his brother and just put us together, like walking down the street, in Miami. Hey, I need y'all to meet each other because one day. You guys talent and that's what the conversation was and so we became friends and we would run into each other every now and then but always kept that in me and you know in this business you run into people and a lot of time when you get black women a lot of times when they find it trying to navigate their way you'll get people that'll they'll prey on that mm -hmm. right just to be simple as that and so when she was talking to me and she explained to me what she was dealing with prior to that I'm just like, uh, nah, keep your money in your pocket. We're going to show you how to write, right? If you're writing books, you can write a screenplay. This is a different yeah. format. So let's go ahead and learn. And, you know, just through the process, I think she started understanding. Because, you know, sometimes when you tell people things, it just be God's way of showing them, right? Because I was telling her things, and then she had somebody else coming over, and they was telling her things after I told her things. And she was like, you learned that in school? Yeah. But well, he told me that a month ago. And right. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you go to school and they're going to tell you the same stuff <laughs> that I'm going to tell you. The only mm -hmm. difference is you paid them mm -hmm. the information. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel. I just feel like 
it's a lot of free information out there. There's a lot of talent people out there. You know, Crystal's the same way. Me and Crystal's relationship started when she was much younger the same way. You know, I just, I gravitate to black women that I see in this business because I know what the struggles are. And so since I know what the struggles are, I try to empower them just like if they were my wife, one of my daughters or my sisters, because I want the same for them. Because let's face it, we're not all going to be here. One day we're going to pass on and our karma is what's going to speak for us. Yes. So. so I love it. Everybody has some type of connection. Right. Yeah, we're all connected in some type of way. And since um, Justice introduced Crystal and I, we kind of been glued to each other's hips. <laughs> we talk every day, all day. Yeah, so we, text messages, email, you name it, all day. All of it, you name it. So we're, we're up uh, night, day, any time of the night, you know. You know, and, and, and that's a wonderful thing when two people can really just come together and work and want the same thing, you know, and Nishan has been amazing. Alfred has been amazing. You know, they, they're both lead actors on other projects as well, you know, and so, I mean, they're, they're superstars within their own right, so it's just such an honor to have them come on to the in-law game, you know, and just show forth their talents, you know, and bring this thing into fruition. Now, speaking of in-law gang, can you tell us a little bit about the in-law gang tell us a little bit about we can't give them everything but give us a little bit about the basically just be careful what you do um your in-laws what the in-laws do to people because <laughs> some yeah, things yeah. just may not go the right way uh so it's it's the mix of uh you know foxy brown taking revenge on uh <laughs> she kicking some ass basically <laughs> Yeah, so. Or her little sidekick, Damon. <laughs> and his, and his sidekick, Damon. Damon is a ride or die. Damon, he's definitely, he's that ride or die. He's that friend, like, hey, I got your back. You know, we've been friends forever. And he's like, whatever you need, I got your back, you know. And um, yeah. he, he's there to protect her. And so it, it's a lot of twists and a lot of turns in there, you know. And um, John, the cast, um, the character John, you know, he's, he starts off loving Cassie, you know, really, really, you know, gently and stuff like that. And he's just stuck in the middle. He's a guy stuck in the middle between his mom and his wife. And makes some bad know, decisions. And makes some bad decisions. Bad decisions. <laughs> <Yeah>. Decisions, decisions. <laughs> yeah. Can some of you relate to the characters of the movie? Can you relate? Who, me? Mm-hmm. Um, I can relate. I can relate being in love. I can relate um, being married and making bad decisions. So I can pull from some parts of that. And like, his is extreme, but you know, we all make mistakes <laughs> as men in life. So it's kind of like, that's not far fetched from what, you know, what it is. And it's just how you recover and how, what do you do to try to recover mm -hmm. and your mistakes and, and in life. But I, he loves her. He, he absolutely loves her. He just, didn't know how to love her right. Now, how are you preparing Nisha, for your role? You know, what are you doing to prepare for your role? Um, I've read the script quite a few times. Um, mm -hmm. Just trying to find the nuances of John and and that difference between him and Nishan and, and uh, just create the character. And, and I think I'll get more when I'm on set and when I'm working with Jesse and, and, and um, Alfred and everybody is, is, you know, that chemistry comes together and you, you, you develop even more once you're on, you're on set and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I'll bring what I develop as a character and then how it evolves once I'm with my wife and we meld together and then have that chemistry. Then it'll change a little, but, you know, mm -hmm. you know I like to stick to some decisions. But in acting, you, you might say you have a decision or what you might want to do and it changes on the whim. So, you know, I don't like to to make huge decisions on the character. I just like to, you know, live in that world. And I know you guys are in pre-production right now. You're about to start filming and it's COVID right now during pan a pandemic. That, I, I know that could be challenging. So what are you doing to take the steps to make sure everybody is safe, you know, and <laughs> 
all, you know, everybody's going to be good. Yeah, so I'm also a COVID compliance officer, so I will be the COVID compliance officer on set. We have okay. a PA. Um, I work in all types of productions, big, small, um, with major networks. So we'll be in good hands. We're going to be doing everything to SAG and DJA guidelines. Um, I'm going to be, I always tell Jesse, let me be the bad cop. You do this <laughs> I'm comfortable in that role. Um, so I'm going to be on top of everybody, making sure everybody's on point. You know, people like Nashawn, Jesse, Alfred, all of our actors, they're our most vulnerable. We want to make sure everyone's protected, but we need to make sure our actors out of everyone are the most guarded because they can't be, you know, wear their mask all day. Like they have to be without it. So we'll make sure that everyone is doing what they need to do. That's awesome. I, I mean, right now it's so much going on and we want everybody to be safe. And we love what we do. You know, J. Jesse Smith, I know you love what you do. So we got to be safe, right? Well, you know, <laughs> on the other hand, now, you know, with one thing about Crystal, I ain't worried about being safe. Crystal's like, <laughs> you know, me and Crystal got a nickname. We, I, I'm boss, I'm boss man, she boss lady. So, you know, I, um, I step back, you know, I don't argue with her. I don't, I don't like to argue anyway, but it, she said it gotta be done. It gotta be done. So that's just what it is. We just literally, uh, halfway through a project in Philly. Um, and yeah, that just, you don't crystal don't bullshit. So. Yeah, he got <laughs> <laughs> she, they, they were surprised. They didn't see me in that element before as far as yelling on. Yeah, she don't, she don't, she don't, she don't play with that right there. You know? She got that West Indian and that other stuff coming out of her. They be fighting. Listen, I told you it's the Jamaican shotguns and Italian mafia all right. That Jamaican one. stuff with it. Okay. <laughs> all that like she switched accents on you. You know what? <laughs> then she the Italian lady that give you the bread. Here you go. <laughs> Most definitely. Well, we want everybody to get geared up for the film. Now, who would you say would like this film? What you know? What type of audience? Who do you think would like this film? I, well, I think this film is. Go ahead. I think this film is relatable to a lot of people um, that's dealt with their in laws and wanted to do things to their in laws, but they just couldn't. Um, I think the the character Damien, <laughs> he's funny. He's a funny dude. Like his character is really funny. So I, I think that character is going to stand out a lot. I think John is going to stand out a lot as as the bad guy. But they're gonna they're they're gonna be rooting for John too because of, you know they're gonna they're gonna empathize with him. So I think that this is gonna transcend to not just one ethnicity. It's gonna go across all markets. I think black people, white people, Chinese people. I think everybody can relate to having some type of issue with their in laws at some point. So um, and and it's based upon a true story. So I, I really think that you know it's gonna captivate some people and and move some people. Okay, I can't wait. You know, be in theaters everywhere, and now everybody is streaming. You know, I mean, it's everywhere, and it's even better. But I'm I'm excited for you guys, and I know this is major. And I want to say congrats to you. You know, um, you about to start filming, so I'm excited. Now, in case anybody wanted to join in and connect and learn more about the movie, where can they go to? They can go, they can follow us on our Instagram at the in-law gang. Um, they can also follow me. They can follow Crystal. They can follow Afford. Afford has some wonderful projects going on. They can follow Nashawn. He has some wonderful projects going on as well. And they also can follow Jay Justice. We will all be um, posted it on our page, you know, along with other media outlets um, that we're going to be interviewing with. We got a lot of photo shoots coming up. So before you know it, in-law gang is going to be in everyone's home. Okay, I love it. I want to add something. This is a, a dark comedy. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, and, and comedians probably can identify with this, Alfred probably, because Alfred's naturally just time and funny. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, comedy comes from the pain in our life. You know, comedians take pain and turn it into comedy. We laugh at it because it's funny, but at the time, it wasn't funny. And I think that's how we, that's our coping mechanism 
a lot of times for black folks, right? We party when people die. We want to have a celebration. We yeah. every we celebrate life, whether it's death or we born. We, we party. And I think that a lot of times um, we find the comedy, even in the drama, you know, after we've gone through it, because we got to step out of it and look and say, what the? Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, and I think what she wrote is in a lot of people's head. You know, I've had one in laws, but you know, you date the daughter and you'd be like, Man, now this ain't gonna work out. I'm gonna wind up whipping your daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this here. Mm, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, your daddy is, yeah, mm, yeah, he might catch a bad one. <laughs> so maybe we should leave this alone. And that's reality, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, I think the fact that she was able to take her reality and turn it into a dark comedy and have some really funny moments in there that you really got to sit back and laugh at, but at the same time, you got a whole entire story that will entertain you. And I think that the casting was based on God. Because, you know, when we first started, we would just, all right, let's get the screenplay ready. You know, we didn't know how or what or where or when. And then just, I think God just started formulating and stuff and then me and crystal we linked you know to hey catching up what you got going on boom boom boom, boom. you gotta meet my husband and you know my husband and, and, and i met him i'm like <laughs> God, man this this guy is a good spirit you know and it yeah. was funny because they said they i don't think they knew i knew nation so when they asked about it, i was like yeah, that's my friend yeah. you know a lot of times when yeah. you say stuff like that people go yeah right we're like yeah that's my friend yeah i, I got his number i know, I know him you know but you know we'll call them when the time is right you know you know because when people in this industry they know sometimes you get a phone call and it's not a sure it's a like what if so you don't really want to call people with a i might be doing this are you down if i might be doing it and they'll tell you yeah but you're only gonna get that a few times because the mics become like that ain't never happening you know so a lot of times you want to wait till that especially when you're doing independent films you want to wait till you're like are we good yeah okay now let me make phone call see if we can you know bring it together and i think it just all fell into place you know with the actors we got some incredible talented actors they're gonna make me look really good trust me <laughs> <laughs> you know we got a we got a dope young um crew that's dp and all that it's just a real tribe of you know people that come together and uh you know it's just gonna be dominant i think and i think because um Crystal and Jesse being put together was like my secret weapon to making sure things went a certain way <laughs> where I could concentrate on other things. You understand what I'm saying? A lot mm -hmm. of times people don't realize, you know, you can take a first time filmmaker, right? That has wrote some books and that's smart as shit. And you mm -hmm. put it with a seasoned filmmaker who knows how to act and do all that. And they both black women. And guess what you got? Power. You got two queens <laughs> on the board. You got two queens on the board. You can't beat a guy in chess if he got two queens on the board. He mm -hmm. gonna win because he ain't gotta go do no battle. So that's what we got working for us. Yes, I love it. It's amazing, you know. And I I love to see black people, you know, to working together. You know, I love this, especially on something this major. So it's it's amazing to see, you know. And, you know, I know you all are working on an in-law game, but I know you have other projects as well. So what else you guys got coming up? Uh, um, I actually have an episode of The Equalizer coming on this Sunday. Okay. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> and um, did an episode of Billions, but I don't know when that's coming out. Okay. And a couple of films that should be coming out hopefully this summer. So we'll see. God willing. Dope. Yeah, I recently completed a film that came out uh, in December. It was number one on all platforms from <laughs> iTunes to Apple TV to Google TV. It's called Last Champion starring Cole Hauser. Uh, recently, I just wrapped in California, shoot my first show on AMC's all black um, um, legal drama called Lace. That's going to be airing this fall. So uh, also in pre-production for a faith-based piece as well. So it's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, wow. That's a man on a mission. 
Yeah, you should see me. I'm in a GMC commercial. Uh, so as soon as I finish with the in-law gang, I got to fly out to Colorado <laughs> and shoot a GMC commercial. I'm doing something really extreme. I'm jumping out of an airplane. Right. So oh I got to prepare for this. So uh, I've done it before. Uh, so uh, it was scary. And, and I got to build up my nerves to do it again. So. Right. I'm excited about that. About that. And I'm uh, finishing a project in Pennsylvania, Justice and I, after in law game. Um, so we're wrapping that up possibly June. Uh, and also doing a lot of different uh, producing on some independent projects, uh, as well as uh, a host on a dating, a new dating app. They have a, a series of webisodes. That's good. Oh. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm doing this movie, The In Law Gang. You know, I'm retired now. I actually, um, I have to, uh, I have to come back and I have to finish uh, Twerk. We got three episodes of that left, and then I have to go to New York to, uh, I'm supposed, uh, we'll wait till they call back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, actually, uh, the next film up for me is I got to go to uh, Oklahoma. I'm shooting this movie called Step in the Love uh, with a few people attached to that. Um, and then I'm back here. We got a few other things that are, you know, like, on, and not, you know, here we have an abuse movie that we're actually gearing up, you know, the same, you know, group of people to put up, um, get that done. Um, me and Jesse formed a company together. So we'll be producing some things through that company, uh, Gemini Taurus you know, as partners together and the abuse movie is one of those things. And then I just got some other projects that, you know, I kind of not at liberally speak about at this moment that, you know, and, uh, you know, frying pan, but um, yeah, it seems <laughs> like it's going to be a busy year. I'm looking forward to it. And, um, you know, this is not my first rodeo. I kind of backed up and came back and took a different stab at it. And I think this time in the film game, I, I decided to build a tribe. You know, I, I took a look, I took a step back and I looked at everybody and I, and I watched what everybody else was doing. And, and I said, you know what? Spike Lee built a tribe. Yes. You know, there yeah. are people that build tribes and that tribe is between crew, actors and everybody. The people that you know, when you call, they're going to show up. So when the budgets get big, they're going to show up. When you at the academy, they're going to be sitting there beside you. And I realized that a lot of young black actors and just, our people in general, like we don't build our foundation amongst each other. You know, we mm -hmm. don't congratulate each other. And we make excuses for being, we make excuses for not being accountable for the shit we supposed to do. Mm. You know, and, and and I think that probably hit me hard when I when I was listening to people at DMX funeral speak. And, and, and I'm just like, I don't understand how a man with millions of dollars could say where was somebody when he was alive. It didn't matter where nobody else was at. Mm -hmm. if you my brother and I got millions of dollars. I don't need nobody to save your life. I'm going to trick your ass to getting on a plane. I'm going to take you somewhere for a year and a half or two years. And that's where we're going to be doing whatever we do. If it was Nashawn and that's me, and I know he's an actor. We're going to be sitting way in the mountain, mountain some, somewhere. And his wife and kids could come visit him. But if I love him that much and I got that kind of money, money's power. You know who do it? White people do it all the time. They do. White people do it all the time. They take their kids, they take whoever they friends, <laughs> whoever they love, and they take that same money that they got and they put them away somewhere in a camp somewhere and hide them away and they make sure they're good. Right? And so they ain't that their funeral was talking about. Well, where was everybody when he was alive and we needed him? But as black people, we do that shit. Right. Mm -hmm. But we don't we don't we don't keep ourselves accountable. We don't hold ourselves accountable for having each other's back. And I think that's the issue, and that's just the issue in life, period. You know, mm -hmm. like even the George Floyd, like, okay, that's one situation. But guess what? The police were slave wranglers. That's all they were. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. It's the same. It just got on different uniforms, right? But they don't stop until us as a people stand together on all platforms, from entertainment, right, to social justice, to just 
period. Just, you know, like your show, you know, like some black people with a white person. Oh, yeah, let's go. But then he go a sister. Well, well, what's her what's her uh, what's her reach? Why does it matter? Mm-hmm. Get on. Let's let's you know, let's give her journalism props. You know, let's yeah. do what we need to do as people so that we can start winning so that we can build things, you know, so that we can get that old black Wall Street mentality amongst mm-hmm. ourselves. Right. Like we no matter what you us build, being black, we have to work harder. 10 times harder and then being a black woman in media is even worse you know people don't understand some you know just because of the color of our skin we have to work extra hard extra hard because of the color of your skin and because of the way you look mm-hmm. see people think attractive is stupid you know that's just the way you know it, it a long time ago you know me and crystal I, Crystal came to an audition, right? I tell us tell the story. Crystal, I know Crystal from an actress. Crystal's a young, talented actress, period. That's how I know her. But I know Crystal. And Crystal walks into this audition room, popping. What are you doing? I'm auditioning. I said, for what? For the video. For this video? I said, you're not auditioning for this video. But you got to stand. I look at Crystal like, you know, this look like, no. And she goes, why not? I ain't cute enough. I ain't got it. I said, you got all of that. <laughs> we can't hear. We lost them. All of that. Mm-hmm. I said, but that ain't what you, that ain't your talent. You're an actor. You're more than just, you know, like, I'm not going to put you in a Lloyd Banks video. Said, I need a check, though, boss man. I said, well, you need a check. Come over here and sit by me. Learn production. And over here is where you can make your money while you pursue your career as an actress. Because that's what you want to do. You know, some people, you know, for lack of a better word, they shake their ass and look cute because that's all somebody told them they were capable of. They didn't tell them they were capable of more. So they settle for that. You know what I'm saying? And me, mm-hmm. I'm just, I come up in a house full of women. I got nine sisters and eight aunts. So I just, and I was raised by my grandmother. So I'm just not okay with demeaning my people women especially all my brothers you know we all kings king king you know they're my beloveds you know i don't have to grow up in the neighborhood with them to understand their struggle you know as a black man you know i don't have to be at your house or your house or your house or your house to understand your story because i come from them i come from that same story i got sisters that come from that story the only difference with me and my sisters if you touch my sisters, you might as well plan your own funeral. That's just me. I'm, I'm, I'll, they can replay this. And yeah, I'll stand up in court and say, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I'll piggyback and, a little bit off of what Justice just said. Like, I know people who know my body work are listening and they're hearing like comedy, Damon, and they're like, what? But it's not that. Um, if you know my body work, you know I don't do any chucking and jiving. There's none of that kind of stuff. This is a dark comedy, like Justice said. The story truly is about friendship and redemption and true love. So, you know, you marry a man, you marry a woman, you marry the family. And that's the heart of the film, you know? I mean, so many times people get into relationships and they don't know what to expect. And sometimes when you're raised without uh, the other opposite um, sex of a parent, you don't understand relationships. So you may get into them and you may say, okay, I'm gonna marry this girl, but you don't know about the whole, you gotta go through the gamut of the grandma gotta like you, the sister gotta like you, the Mm -hmm. uncle gotta like you. And you don't know that stuff. So I think what, what Jesse has been able to do is actually give you a, a front row seat, for, for especially for those young females who don't know that, you know, uh, a man's family can make it healthy if they don't like it. It could be little things, too. They, don't, they can feel like you're you're so good, you're going to take away their son away from them. And it becomes a, a, a rivalry between mothers and grandmothers and aunts. And they feel like they need to have his attention. So this this story sheds light on all of that. So it's not the kind of comedy where it's slapstick and you won't see anybody running around doing anything crazy. It's going to be situational comedies where you're going to where you're going to find it funny. Like Justice talked about the comedy, you see the pain that she's dealing with, and even for my character Damon, he's just really like her friend. And and we don't want to give too much away about the story with that though. But he's just a friend who basically believes she deserves more. So what he basically does is he says, even if you're going to do this outrageous thing. I'm going to be there for you because real friends don't let real friends do dumb things. So that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's that's the loyalty. Thing. Yeah, loyalty. loyalty. That, yeah. That's loyalty. That's loyalty. right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, can you, 
Can you also give out your social media for everybody out there that's watching too, so they can connect with you? E individual social media, if you don't mind. Oh, mine is I am Nation. Uh, I am Nation N A S H A W N. Oh, Instagram. Sorry. Mine is Jesse Julie on all platforms: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine is crystal underscore t underscore williams on instagram yeah mine is alfred my first name alfred er16 um that's on across all social media platforms alfred er16 three-year-old <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm jay jessa smith on all platforms instagram twitter you know youtube <laughs> 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 So everybody can connect, you know, collaborate. If you want to get involved, you also gave out all the information. I'm so honored to have you on today. You know, like I said, congrats again on all the success. You know, I know you got a big week ahead filming. It's going to be a good movie. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to shoot. We're going to have a lot of talent. And, man. It's going to be fun. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just really so gassed because. I don't think people get how rare it is when you're doing an independent movie and you have yeah. real talent. Like you don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Words out because it's not believable. So for me, you know, it, it, it's a. It, it, some people look at independent filmmaking like, oh, okay, but any film you make is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Period. Any film you make is a big deal. I, I learned that years ago. You know, Guy Tory, me and him had a conversation. I made one mistake. I said, "Yeah, this this a little independent." He said, whoa, 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 "What? <laughs> All this shit is big." Mm -hmm. And he taught me something from that. It's about mentality. It is. How you take into your work is what you put on the screen. So. We're about to bring you some hot. Yeah. Yeah, I prepared my Oscar speech. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You ready? There you go. <laughs> that is a good one right there. But that's, you know, I, I, love... I, I want to take it a little step further with Justice. That's cool because I think for like people like myself and Nashawn, it's like, Sometimes it's really hard to get people like actors to do things because they felt like they like this came off a show and I'm like like can you do my film? It's like nah, I'm too big for that. But 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 the reality is, and I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Like there, there are no small movies and you don't know who's watching you or what you do. It could it could be somebody who's seen you just with they could be in bed with their wife watching this little small independent film and they see you and be like yo that dude is so dope but that girl is so dope I want I want to hire her. So I believe yeah. it's so true when 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 guy Toy told you that because a guy. By the name of Andrew Burris keeps telling me that too. He kind of made me shift how I see things, and he was basically saying the same thing. Like, listen, and for me, I'm competitive too. It's like whenever you get on that set, man, there are no small sets. You know, you treat the director like he's Steven Spielberg. I see so many African American actors do that. They, when 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 we're amongst other people, they put their best foot forward. When they get amongst us, they kind of like they they dial it in and they like not really there. So I I totally agree with that, man. That's real. Yeah. And I just want to add too that. Um, just, you know, Nashawn and I, we met extremely briefly, uh, extremely briefly at a table read for a film way back when that we both weren't a part of, but we met briefly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I saw him at a filming event. Like, we didn't have no scenes together. I was in my scene, and I saw him, and I was like, Nashawn. Um, and then I just, you know, kept him in mind for different things that I was involved with, casting-wise and producing-wise, everything. Um, and I reached out to him like, hey, I know you probably don't remember me, but, <laughs> um, you know, he responded. And literally when Jesse and I had the conversation, I was like, Nashawn. And then that's when Jesse was like, oh, that's my boy. But, I'm, you know, definitely people always think about you and they keep you in mind. Like, you know, that's a talented person. We're going to put him in something. So people, it's very true. People are always watching and thinking about you for other things. Always. I think it's always about reinventing yourself. And, like, you know, we work as actors, but then it's always these jobs that you gravitate towards and like independence helped me in my career a lot. Like, you know, the movies I have behind me, these are all independent movies, but 
people see you. People see your work. And if you continue to put good work on screen, they can't yeah. deny you. They're going to have to see you. So, you know, it's it's even more that we have to do more for black films. We got to put our best foot forward for black films because th this is going to be the catalyst for a lot more work and a lot more opportunities for people. So you can't drop the ball on this. You have to take it as serious as you possibly And I don't, I don't play when it comes to this acting game. I, I, when we're on set, we're on set. We're working, we're working. We can play later. We can enjoy it after we rap and we do everything, but we're working. So, you know, I, I take all of this serious because you never know who's going to see you and how that's going to get you into another position in your life. So you have to take all these jobs serious. You can't just dial it in. There's no dialing in. It's punch, 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 and work. And as long as you continue to put good work out, good stuff will come back. I love it. Yeah, it's, I agree. It's amazing. Like, even this year, you know, I covered the Oscars. And just to see some of my fellow media, uh, my fellow media brothers and sisters receiving Oscars because they also got into filming this year, you know. And I'm like, wow, you know, just to see them now. They do the same thing I do, but look at them. Now they got an Oscar, you know? And it's, it's crazy because um, <laughs> Shaka, who, Shaka King, who directed, um, uh, I can't think of the movie, uh, Jewish the Black Messiah. I've known Shaka since he was a kid. I, I did this play years ago at National Black Theater Harlem called Endangered Species, and his mother was the playwright. Me, Mike Williams, uh, a, a, a couple of us all did this play in Harlem for like months. And I've known Shaka since he was a kid and I knew when he went to NYU and then his first movie ends up being this amazing film, get nominated for an Oscar. So, you know, it, everybody's role can be, yes. it, it can come any way. So, you know, I'm, just, I'm proud of him because he's a Brooklyn kid who made it. You got you got to make for Oscar. They gonna always offer you something now. They can't deny yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. that was smart for him to go to NYU. I tell my I have a son that's a young filmmaker, and I told him he didn't want to go to college. I said he said I know all this stuff already. I said but you don't know the people. Yeah, exactly. the college is where you go to connect relationships. And the relationship is that where you go to get. It ain't where you go to grab the talent. I tell people all the time the talent is in you. One of the best things I ever heard was an actress, well-known actress, Cabin War. She said she had to forget everything she learned to become a good actress. Hmm. Right? So all these schools she had went to, yeah. right? Didn't even matter. We were sitting in the street port and she said, I had to forget everything I learned to become a good actress. So I that empowers me to know and I tell kids now, no, go to school. You got an opportunity, go. Because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to make all your connections. That's where all the rich kids go. That's that the fathers and CEOs of companies, they go to NYU's and every place else. And those are the people you want to try to build friendships with. Because those are the people that Find are going to be executive producers and your mm -hmm. producers are going to help you because they're going to believe in your talent. But you're going to get but, that talent once you leave school because the best teacher to me is hands-on when you're doing it. You know, when you yeah. have to lock in and, and, and you got to go. It's the best teacher. I know actors that and, and, and to add to what Nashawn was saying, you know, I work with actors and the first time they were in a film, I put them in a film and now they're A-list actors now. You know, it's just a different path and a different road. But I think just God, you know, kind of channels those paths. Everybody's path is a little different. You know, yeah. some people can bear the weight of the world on their shoulders and stand up every day with a smile. And some people can't do it. And in this business, I tell people it's like having a bad relationship that don't mean to hurt you. It's mm. just what it is. Because there were people that will do something to you in this minutes and don't know you from Adam and will tell people, nah, I don't like that guy. He can't act or he can't. And I'll be like, you ain't that, what are you talking? You, do you know him? Ooh. Well, I just heard. <laughs> you heard. <laughs> uh, you heard. Okay. <laughs> we ain't gonna go on heard. We gonna we're going to figure this out. And then, you know, that's it in a nutshell, really. That happens quite a bit, more than people believe, actually. Yeah, it does. It, is. it really you know, is. It's happened to me, and I've been in the room and seen it happen, but just stopped it from happening. 
Because mm-hmm. not everybody, not everybody's on your side. It's, you can, you can, you got people who are very envious of you, and you don't even know it. And they, they talk dirt on your name and say whatever it is, just so you do not get an opportunity because they're tired of seeing you get opportunities. I tell people all the time: God hears the conversations we don't hear. Mm-hmm. Right? You got to go what's in your heart. And I never forget the first move. My first move was twenty years ago, right? Crime partners. And I remember sitting through the casting with Winston St. Clair and we were casting, you know, we knew we had time with Turner Clifton Powell, you know, Ice T, you know, some actors that I had worked, did videos with that agreed to come and do my first piece for me. Like me and Tyler Turner made that deal probably six years before the movie came. But then the star breakouts from there, Doria Missick, right? Laz Alonzo. I literally had to fight for these guys to be in the film. It was a fight. They weren't in the room, but they knew the fight because the fight came. It went. It went beyond the room to the point mm-hmm. where I start saying, yeah. "You want who? You can't act." It, it became that for me because it, to me it was like, "This is my name. I can't put my name on some shit." And this dude sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my fight. It was my fight because I could see the talent in both of them. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And again, to what Nashawn was saying, to what we all talking about, but their journeys were different. You know, you know, Dorian did that movie and never looked back. His journey was different. You know, Laz had to pick another route. You know, he had to go do Leprechaun in the Hood, but <laughs> different routes, you know. But he wound up being, you know, supporter back then, one of the biggest grosser movies of all time, Avatar. So everybody's journey. It's just different. I just tell our actors because I love actors. You know, I just tell actors do you anything. Like be able to do anything. Be able to play any character at any given time. You don't always gotta play the nerd guy. You don't always gotta play the killer. You ain't always gotta play that guy. You, you, you we're gifted. We're young, gifted, and black. Right? And we're gonna die that way. So there is nothing in the spectrum that you can't play. Right? If a white person can play Cleopatra, then a a white person should be able to, a black person should be able to play James Bond. I mean, that's just how I feel. It matters. I think it's mm-hmm. the acting that counts. I don't think it's about the mm-hmm. human being. A lot of times, and I think Crystal knows this from working with me a lot, I'll get it, have a character description, and I'll be like, yeah, well, they, nah, I'm not, well, call so and so because they can act. Like, I don't care about the character description. Because guess what? Don't nobody know that guy until we present him. Right? Don't nobody know that was a white guy or that's a black guy because they didn't read the screenplay. They're going to see the movie. When they see the movie, as long as you bring it, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. One of the best movies of our generation, you know, was Full Metal Jacket. One of the lead actors in that movie had never acted a day in his life. He was just a drill sergeant. So you just had to wind him up. Let him go. Go. That's it. And he went off to a big career after that. You know? And I just say that to say that sometimes we make things harder than what they are. Hmm. They don't have to be very hard. So what would you say to any actor out there uh, that's, you know, just starting out and they want to, you know, just, you know, get their feet wet. Well, get to where you are today. What would you recommend or uh, you know, I mean, uh, a thick matters. skin, right. a thick skin. Um, get used to hearing no. You're not mm-hmm. used to being told no. You you you're going you're in the wrong business because you're gonna you, you're gonna get a lot of no's before you get one yes. And all those no's are gonna be worth it once you get that one yes. And um, I think you have to love it because this is a, this is not a business for. People, if you don't love it, you, you're going to run it from it a long time ago because it's hard. There's a lot to it. There's a lot that you have to give. And if you don't love it, you just want to be in to be a star, you're in the wrong business. Yeah, that's my take on it, too. I often, I often talk to a lot of young people. Who I get asked that question. My first response is always going to be, don't do it. Um, <laughs> don't do it. Because if I can if I can tell you don't do it first, you, I can see how much you, you, you really want to do this. If you're trying to be a star, like Nishan said, then... There's other ways you can do that. Uh, if you're trying to make a lot of money, well, before you can just go on Wall Street to make a lot of money if you're trying to do that. But if you're going to really do this, you know, I always I encourage people to follow their passion. 
And sometimes, particularly in our community, you know, we like to be in front of the camera. Like I'm, I'm the biggest advocate. And one of the reasons why I love doing this film is because there's a lot of black women behind it. It's a black director. I'm a big advocate for having us being behind the camera in decision-making positions. You know, I, I, I kind of get tired of seeing us in front of the camera on the football field, on the basketball court. It's kind of tiring because I feel like there's a certain group of the population feel that's all we can do is entertain. Um, and I know I'm kind of talking about myself because, but I, I, I have transitioned into the business aspect of it or, or the behind the scenes aspect of it. But I would just tell them like, listen, if don't do this because you want to get a pretty girl or you feel like it's, it's, it's going to make you a lot of money. Do it because it's your passion. It's what God called you to do. After I can get to my, my spiel of trying to discourage them and I can still see they have the passion for it, then we can have those formulaic type of conversations about school and going to do this class and going to do theater. But until that happens, because it's a career of ups and downs, right? I remember Tom Hanks once said, he said, you're not a real actor until you're, you're really hot and you're really famous and then your phone don't ring no more for a year. You know what I mean? Like, like, what are you going to do? Like, you made all this money, you done did all this stuff, and then now nobody wants to touch you. Do you have the emotional fortitude to say, I'm still, I'm an actor? You're not an actor until you go through that. When you haven't worked for, like, two years, are you still going to call yourself an actor? Or are you going to say, nah, I mean, I, I got to go get a job. I got to go to work, man. I can't do this. So being an artist is very difficult. There's emotional thing. Relationships are hard, you know what I mean? While, you're, while you're, you're, your classmates and everybody are buying homes and having babies and and getting married, you're going on auditions. So it, so it can make you feel like Peter Panish. So you have to have the emotional fortitude to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? So so artists, this is the why we this is the reason why I feel artists make a lot of money because it takes a lot a strong person to take that journey. Because like I said, you're gonna see everybody else around you appear to it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna buy homes, they're gonna have babies, they're gonna have kids graduating from high school and college. And it's like, hey man, you still going on them auditions? You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? and, and, and then it happens. Boom, you get this big show or big movie. Then everyone's like, oh my God, I know you could do it. Oh my God. But then, but you but 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 again, after that, you're emotionally tired, like Justice was talking about. You've carried that weight on you. You know, if you look at someone like Ang Lee's story, who's a director, and I feel forgive me for rambling, but he talked no, about okay. how his wife. His so wife was basically bringing in so much money and he was at home writing. And he was like, I live up in the Asian community and that's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was like, I'm at home writing, taking care of the kids. And he's like, my wife is making this money. So he's like, he, he felt an insecurity about it. But when he made his first big film, everything everything was back in balance and he was, he was a man again. So I would tell people like to get into this business, please have the emotional strength and, and spiritual fortitude to do it. If not, don't do it. Well, I see we got Maria O says, hi, Alfred. <laughs> hello, Mar hello, Maria. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching the show. Now, y'all got any shout outs before we wind things down? Any quick shout outs to anybody out there? Any thank yous? Uh, I know you got other cast members and things. So any more shout outs? Thank you to the entire cast. Um, we got amazing cast, like Jay was saying. We got La Rivers on. We have um, Cherie Daniels. We have Alashonda Courtney. Uh, I mean, Tracy. I mean, we we have a lot. I mean, we have amazing cast. So just shout out to the entire cast of the in-law gang. Um, yeah, I'm excited, you know, to be working with them. Shout out to my mom. She's been praying every day. Every day. She calls me every morning praying. <laughs> Um, shout out to my teachers and everybody else, Pan Fam, Tribe. Shout out to everybody. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to give a shout out to God first because without him, nothing is possible. And I just believe like this journey was planned by him. You know, if you were outside looking in, you would probably understand where it started from and where it's at now. And I just want to, after that, just give thanks to all the actors that bought the incredible million dollars plus more talent to the project and um you know and the actors that are not here neither clifton powell or river and other actors you know um i don't want to be random but you know just want to thank you and you know i just look forward you know we a few days we on the countdown <laughs> you know <laughs> and i'm just i hey listen man it's just a it's just a feeling you get when you know it's 
man, this thing is almost like having sex with my wife for the first time. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like it's if I, the only, you know, it just, it, it really is like that, man, you know, and I think that's why I come as just such a, you know, like me and Alfred clicking, it, it just, you know, because we feel the same way. When I mm -hmm. talk, I just smile because I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a relationship. Like, yeah. you just got to be built different. You just got to be built to know that if this wasn't your path, you wouldn't be on it this long. Right. Period. God would have snatched yeah. you off of it. He would have showed you a different way. Amen. <laughs> you can have days when you're going to talk to the devil. Days when you're going to talk to God. Days when you're going to talk to the devil. Some days you're going to talk to the devil. Some days you're going to talk to the devil. You're going to keep talking to him. And then all of a sudden. I ain't talking to the devil, honey. You're going to hear, you're going to hear, that, you're going to hear that, voice, that voice of faith over here and be like, what are you doing? What are you talking to him for? Yeah, hey, don't do that bullshit. And then you got to come back over here. And you got to pray a little bit. And you got to get on the phone and call somebody. And Sometimes they don't even know why you're calling. You were just talking to the devil. You need to talk to somebody that been talking to God. So, yeah, it's that business, but it's it's just a fun to it. And you know, outside of you know some of the people you're gonna run into in this business, it's worth the amazing people you meet. You know, and like I said, for me, I love to see actors go, like, especially when I was the guy to say, "That's the one." And everybody was like, no, yeah. And then you turn around a few years later and yeah, that was the one. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's just amazing to me. So, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to this journey for the next few years. We about to kick it some doors. It's going up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, I thank you, everybody, for being my guest here on the New Witch Show. You know you got to come back. You know, just tell us. <laughs> you know, we want to hear the update. You know, the after the filming, because I'm excited. I know it's going to be a long week, but you know, I know it's going to be fun. So you definitely got to come back and give me all the update, the news. You know, and you know, we want everybody to stay tuned and check you guys out, support the film, and you know, so much more. You can connect. With us, the Nikki Rich Show .com, and follow us on at Nikki Rich Show TV and my personal page, Miss Nikki Rich. And I want to give a quick shout out to my mentor, Oprah, because I know you're watching. <laughs> so I always got to shout her out because she inspires me so much um, to keep going, keep pushing. And, you know, when you got amazing people in your corner, um, you know, you definitely got to give them their flowers while they're here. So, you know, thank you guys for being a part of my show. And, you know, like I say, we welcome you back anytime. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So All right. Thank you.